Hey guys and welcome back to another engine for tutorial. In today's video we're going to be doing a tied in place system. So in yesterday's video when I made the 8 way directional movement I said that I was going to be doing a tied in place as it kind of just rotated on the circle kind of floating about. So we're going to be doing tied in place and I'm doing that today. Now you don't need to do that tutorial at all, this can be completely independent. However, that's what I did yesterday. So let me show you what we're going to create today. So we're in, we can move around with our system we made yesterday and then we can now also tie in a place. So if I move the camera to the right, we're going to turn in place like that. If I move it to the left, we're going to turn again. Now, if you don't like how fast that is, how it looks, we can change the speed. So I just upped the speed a little bit to test it out earlier. So if I put it back down to one, we should have it looking a little bit different. So if I get back in, it looks like that. So this is what we're going to be making today. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step we want to take is we want to import our animations. So I've imported some on the export from Mixmo and just retargeted them to the UE4 mannequin. So I'll leave a download link in the description down below to the retargeted ones and I'll also leave a link to the Mixmo ones. Now when you download them, you're going to want to make sure they look like this. So this might look a bit odd, they're not actually turning, they're just moving in a circle. So make sure on Mixmo they are these ones, not any other ones. So you don't want one like this, you just want one which looks like this for both the left and right turns as that way it's going to work perfectly when we rotate the player in game as well. So once you've imported the animations, that's going to be good for you. Then we want to set up creating some booleans to know whether or not we want to turn left or right. And so we're going to do that in our character blueprint. So we're going to go to content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. For you, it's going to be first, third, or whatever you've named it. In here, we want to use our mouse input, so our input axis turn. So I'm just going to select this and just move it over here into some empty space so I have more room to do this code. And I'm also just going to grab the look up and just move that down a bit so again we have some more space here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, plugging that into the add controller your input there. The condition of this, we just want to see if the player is moving. So to do that we're going to right click and get velocity like that. At the return value we're going to get a vector length, so a vector length like that. And out of that we're going to get an equal equal float and just leaving it at zero. So if the speed is zero, i.e. we're not moving, that boolean return value will go into the condition of the branch there. So now we're only going to fire off this line of code if the player is not moving, which is obviously what we want. So then off of true, we're going to hold down S left click to get a sequence, plug that in there like so. And then off of then zero and then one, we're going to get some branches. So we'll hold down B left click to get two more branches like so, plugging them into then zero and then one like that. And so now what we want to check for here is whether we're looking left or right. So to do that we can right click and get turn like so, just the axis value turn up there and this is just going to simply be this axis value in our input axis turn here. So this is going to be the value on whether we're looking left or right. So out of this we want to get a float is greater than a float. I'll just move these branches a little bit. And this float is greater than a float is going to go into the top branch here with the value in here as 0.3. So if the turn is more than 0.3, that is going to be right. And then we're going to come out of this again and get a less than. So a float is less than a float. And this one is going to be minus 0.3. So if it's less than minus 0.3, we're going to be turning left. And again, plugging a return value into the condition there. That way, we now know if we're turning left or right. But we also need to set some booleans so the code knows that as well. At the moment, we're just calculating it we need to make sure the code knows that. So to do that, we'll hit a plus variable here, name this one turn right question mark, making sure it is a boolean, hit another plus variable and name it turn left question mark. Now if we compile this, what I'm going to do to make this a bit more efficient is I'm going to make a macro. So I'm going to hit the plus macro here and now we have a new macro. I'm going to name this one turn right slash left question mark. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add an input name this one in and I'm going to make it an execution pin. Add another input naming it turn right question mark making this one a boolean like we just made these down here and add one final one naming it turn left question mark and this is just more efficient because we can set both of these booleans in one simple macro instead of having to get multiple sets we can just use it in one and we'll add an output as well naming it out and making it an execution now we don't really need to do this However, it's always good practice just in case. So then inside of this, what I want to do is I want to set the turn right boolean and I'm going to set it to the turn right boolean that we input into there and do the same with turn left. So whatever we input into this macro 
it's going to set these booleans to, again making it more efficient for us. So I'm going to go back to the event graph and now we can just get this macro here setting it off of true. So just drag and drop there, plug the in into true and we want to tick turn right and leave turn left as false. So if we're not moving and we move the camera to the right we're going to make sure the code knows we want to turn right and not left. And then out of false we're just going to set turn right to be false. We don't need to set turn left false as well so we can just do it like that. And we'll do the same down here off the other branch. So if we want to move left we're going to get the macro off of true, ticking turn left, leaving turn right as false. And then we'll set turn left to be false off of the false one there like so. So now the code knows whether we want to turn left or right. Over here as well, if we don't have enough speed, so the false at this branch, so if we are moving, we want to get this macro again, plug it into false, making sure they are both unticked, so they're both false like that. So now if we aren't moving and we want to turn left or right, the code knows that, and if we are moving, the code knows we can't turn left or right. So this is that code set up perfectly. So I'm just going to select this, hit C to comment it, and name it turn in place booleans like that, or whatever makes most sense for you. So I'm going to compile and save that. So now we're basically done in here. So we can compile, save, and close the character blueprint. And now we want to go into our animation blueprint. So for me, that's content, mannequin, animations, third person, and MVP. But for you, it could be first, third, or again, whatever you've named it. Or if you don't have an animation blueprint, I do have a video on setting one up and creating one. And it's just essentially where all your animations are and where the code knows to transition between different ones. So it's very helpful and what we need to do turn in place. And once we're in here, we're going to go over to our event graph. And you want to make sure that you have the speed set up as well. Direction isn't necessary for this one, however the speed is. So if you don't have it, you can just get the velocity, the vector length, and set that to be the speed. Again, I do that in my animation blueprint video. But what we want to do after this is we want to go up here and right click and get event blueprint begin play. Off of this, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. Now if you already have a reference to your character, already a cast, you don't need to do this, but try get pawn owner won't work as we need it to be specific to our player so we can access those booleans we just made. The object will be get player character and as third person character we're just going to simply right click, promote this to a variable, naming it character reference so we can access this later on. Back down towards the end of the code, we're going to come off of our final set, so our final node, and get an is valid with the question mark there. The input object of this is going to be our character reference. And the reason we're doing this is because this will actually fire off before the begin play because it's that quick. So what it's going to do is the first time or first couple of times it fires off, it won't actually be able to access the character reference, which will give you some errors. So this is valid just means it will only fire off this code if it can. So what we want to do is come out the character reference and get turn left and then come off it again and get turn right. And all we're going to do with this is right click and promote a variable naming it turn left or whatever it is for you accordingly and then on turn right right click promote variable naming it turn right and this just means we have easy access to these booleans inside of this animation blueprint as well which is what we need to decide whether to play the animation or not and so now that is that part set up as well so now if we compile and save that we can start setting up the transitions and the actual animation so we'll go back to our state machine which for me is just default here you might be the anim graph so just double click the state machine there. And off of our idle run state that we have here, I'm going to come out and add a state, naming this one turn right. And I'll drag out of that back into the idle run so we can transition to and from that. I'll come off of idle run again, add another state, naming this one turn left. Again, dragging back into the idle run state there. So now if we double click turn right, we can put our right turn animation in here. So I just search for turn up here. I can get right turn putting that in there. So when this state is active, it's going to play this animation. Now if I go back to default and then go to turn left, I can put in our left turn, which again, we're going to do the same. It's going to play the left turn animation when we want to. So now those are the animations set up. However, we still need to set up transitioning to them so that code knows when to play them. So that's very simple to do as well. What I'm going to do is double click on these transitional lines here. So first one I'm going to do is idle run to turn right. I'm going to double click that. And in here, this is where we can decide when it should play this animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the speed here. Out of this, I'm going to get a less than or equal to. So a float is less than or equal to a float. And I'm going to put it as one. So it's essentially just if we aren't moving. Out of this, I'm going to get an and boolean, plugging that into the result. And the other variable in the and 
is going to be turn right. So if we aren't moving and we have turn right set to true, we're going to play the animation there. And now in the character blueprint, I did set it up so this boolean will only be set to true if we aren't moving. However, it's always good practice just to double check it anyway, just in case, so that it really won't play this animation just in case, because there might be that split second where it's still true when you're moving. So this is always good to just have it here as well. So what we can do is we can select this and hit Control C to copy it. Go back to default to so our state machine. And now if we go idle run to turn left, we paste this in here by using Control V, plug that in there. All we want to do in here is drag our turn left boolean onto the turn right. So now this means that if we aren't moving and we want to turn left, it's going to turn left. So that's perfect. So now if we go back to default, what I'm going to do now is set up the turn right back to idle run. So again, I'll double click the transitional line there. Now this one's a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and get time remaining with time remaining right turn. Out of the return value, I'm gonna get equal equal with a float, leaving it as zero. So this means if the animation has finished playing. And out of this, I'm gonna get an or boolean. In this other value here, I want to see if we're not moving again. So I'm gonna get the speed and get a less than or equal to with a float again putting it as one so if we aren't moving and then we also want to have another input into this so we're going to add pin on the or and this one is going to be if we're not turning right so i'll get turn right and out of this i'll get a not boolean so essentially if this is false plugging that in there like so and then the or is going to go into the result there so what this means is that it's going to stop playing our turn right animation so it's going to go back to our normal ones if either the animation is finished playing we start moving or we stop turning right. So either one of those needs to be true for this in the change. So then we can just select it, control C, go to default. And now if we go to turn left back to idle run, control V putting this in here, plug it into the result. Again, all we need to change is the turn right to turn left and the time remaining to be time remaining left turn instead. So it's for the correct animation. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. If the animation is finished playing, or we start moving, or we stop turning left, it's gonna end this animation. Hey guys, sorry about this. I also forgot to mention one thing. In your character blueprint, what you're gonna to want to do is select the character movement, and we want to search for rot, for rotation. And we want to make sure that we untick orient rotation to movement, and tick use controller desired rotation instead. And this means that the player and the character will actually rotate dependent on the player's camera. So sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier, but this should work for you now as well. So now if we compile and save, this should be the code done. So let's minimize and hit play to test this out. You see we can walk around like normal, if we're moving and turn the camera, nothing's gonna happen. However, if I am standing still and turn the camera, we're gonna get our turn in place animation like so, which is working perfectly for us. So instead of just rotating on the spot, we're actually gonna have an animation for turning in place like so. And then if we start moving, it's gonna stop doing it like so. Or if I stop moving the camera, it's gonna stop turning as well. So this works perfectly. And again, if you just open up your animations, which you have, you can change the speed at which they play at. And you can do that by simply just increasing or decreasing the rate scale. However, I like this speed, so I'm not gonna mess about with it. But I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we want to do. We've set up turn and place animations so we can rotate the camera and the player will turn in place as well, playing correct animations for it too. So it doesn't just look bad rotating on the spot. And this works with all of the other animations we set up as well. However, again, they're not necessary to have. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.